Hey guys, this video we're going to look at enterprise bargaining and the relative advantages and disadvantages of entering such an agreement. Now we talked about the minimum wage and how slowly the government's phasing out the minimum wage in favour of this enterprise bargaining or decentralised wage system. So what enterprise bargaining essentially is, is where uh, wages and wage conditions, wages and wage conditions are negotiated on a firm to firm basis. Firm to firm basis. So it's under the assumption that firms and employees will have a better understanding of what they're worth or what the employee is actually worth to the firm and therefore they can arrange enterprise bargaining agreements tied to their efficiency in order to create a situation or a wage level which is beneficial to both firm and employee. So the benefit of this is that it encourages efficiency. So as we can see, the major advantage of enterprise bargaining, we're going to look here, is that it incentivizes workers to increase their productivity levels. So what this means is that these workers would enter a bar, enter an enterprise agreement, and that would suggest that they would increase their output by five percent, increase their output by five percent, and as a result, that would lead to a possible four percent increase in wage. And this bargain, this bargaining agreement, or this enterprise agreement, is. Uh, agreed to by both the worker and the employee and so as we can see even though their wage has increased here it doesn't necessarily mean the real unit labor cost or the RULC a recognized acronym has increased as well so real unit labor costs are kept low as a result of this enterprise bargaining agreement where say a 5% increase in output results only in a 4% increase in wage. And so the real unit labor cost, so the real unit cost of this labor or this employee actually decreases because their wage increases at a lower level than their output. So the advantage of that is that firms can cut costs as well as increase efficiency. Now, if we, as we've noted, in a series of other lectures on aggregate supply, an increase in efficiency leads to, firstly, an increase in international competitiveness, and secondly, a decrease in cost inflation. And so this is very beneficial to all the government goals and our domestic economic prosperity. So that's the advantage of enterprise bargaining is that it improves worker efficiency or productivity and it links efficiency with incentives to their wage. So it incentivizes workers to actually increase their productivity so as to increase their wage levels. However, there are disadvantages to enterprise bargaining. Now we're going to note the major disadvantage is that they have to go through what is known as a better off test. So all enterprise agreements have to go through what is known as a better off test by, by Fair Work Australia. And this is conducted by Fair Work Australia. And the better off test is used to assess whether an enterprise agreement is actually acceptable according to the, the 10 uh, national employ employment standards. So 10 national employment standards. And you can look at these 10 national employment standards on the RBA website, but these 10 national national employment standards generally include the the idea the relating to um, holidays, unpaid parental leave, long service leave entitlements, uh, wage rates, four weeks annual leave, and other such agreements made between the, the firm and the employee. To, to add on to the benefits so that they, they uh, insulate them 
in case of any accident or any uh, un unsuspecting event that would occur in the future, or unplanned unplanned event that would occur in the future. So this protects employees from any uh, change into their in, in their own personal or business situation in the future. So this better off test uh, has to be in core has to incorporate this. 10 national employment centers. And the problem with this is that the enterprise agreement has to match or exceed uh, that, so match or exceed the wage level as deemed appropriate by the uh, Fair Work Australia. So match or exceed the wage level that as deemed appropriate by Fair Work, Fair Work Australia. And so what this means is that those under a threshold of what it was $108,300, they would actually have to go through this rigorous test to see that this in enterprise agreement is actually better off for the workers if they enter this rather than uh, the, the relevant modern award that incorporates uh, the 10 national employment centres. So as a result, often with workers earning less than this threshold figure, it means that this could increase labour costs for firms. Because they have to adhere to this 10 national or these 10 very rigorous, rigorous national employment standards, this may actually increase labour costs for these firms. And as a result, we've talked about increasing labour costs and how that could result in uh, a decrease in efficiency or a decrease in production or even a discouraging or even discouraging the growth of productive capacity or aggregate supply in the economy by firms because they are proven to be less profitable than before. So that's a major issue behind enterprise bargaining is that they have to go through this and better off test. And so wage levels in fact could actually be higher than what it was under the original centralized wage system. Although there are advantages here that it incentivizes workers to increase their product productivity levels, it may in fact increase our real unit labor costs. As the government or Fair Work Australia tries to promote this idea of equity.